On the very first day, before the slaughter and factional struggles, Captain Lorenzo assumed command. He explained to all of us what he thought the flash of light up in space was. The Sinopac Orbiter. It made sense. The three supranationals were engaged in an arms race. This rivalry had been pushing science to its limits for decades. When news broke out that the time barrier had been breached, the news bots were less than impressed. Sending particles back through time seemed like a novel way to spend trillions. Few people were interested. Fewer believed such a stunt was possible. When rumors of time bombs surfaced, public hysteria waxed and waned. Humanity's deep-rooted fear of atomics only existed because mankind had unleashed upon itself such titanic power. With time bombs, however, no one understood the technology, let alone feared it. Time tourism speculators positioned themselves to make a fortune. Competing supranationals built massive Higgs field displacers in orbit, and I took a vacation away from my scientific data appropriation business. I knew enough about high-end technology to be on Captain Lorenzo's governance team. That's how I got to meet Hansard, Slade, and Ottoman. We were tasked with coming up with answers in a desperate attempt to restore order among the terrified passengers. But answers were difficult to attain, and even more difficult to explain to the hundreds of families, paralyzed with fear. Every day a new creature would attack the settlement, preying on us. Each night brought another horror. Giant red cockroaches invaded. One bite and you bloat until you die of heart failure. Carnivorous dragonflies swarmed, attacking victims like piranhas, fluttering away with chunks of human flesh between their mandibles. Rogue mammal-like reptiles terrorized and stalked us at night. Tusks, claws, spikes, the variety of these animals defied comprehension. A small marshland due south is thought to be the source of this wildlife. The stranded cruise ship attracted them all, a ready supply of sustenance for all the carnivores in the area. A handful of passengers died during the chrono storm. A few hundred have been killed by these creatures. The rest perished during the infighting. A group of passengers, particularly a lawyer named Bobby Cost, didn't like the idea of Captain Lorenzo rationing out food and supplies, so they instigated a coup. The riot lasted for two days. Cost and his clique managed to overrun the lower deck storerooms and rally most of the paying passengers behind him. However, they were unable to secure the bridge or win over any key company engineers. Standoff's been in place ever since. The Pelicosaur relaxes in the murky pool, liking the shade and moisture. Only its spiky fin and snout and a spear remain above the waterline. What do we do? I ask. Slade looks at me and gives me a rare smile. It looks happy until it's hungry again. Commotion from the below decks distracts us. We follow the shouting downwards to the starboard, where white steel meets rusty sand. I can see a small crowd running out onto the dune, towards three pitiful-looking human beings. <laughs>